Welcome to the service clinic at Low Country Harley Davidson. I'm Doc Harley. None of us like to hear the call from the service rider at the Harley shop that says that will be $400 plus installation for a new starter. Okay, I need a new starter. I don't have a kicker on my motorcycle, so I guess I need the new starter. But you're still saying $400? That's a lot of money. What broke in the starter? Well, that's a good question. Let's look into the starter and show you some of the parts that can break on it. Now, your starter is connected directly to your battery. So it has a direct cable to take all the cranking amps into the starter to turn the starter motor. So here's the first connection. When you push your starter button, it goes through a bunch of relays, but it finally ends up here, which activates the hold-in and the pull-in solenoid coils inside here. And that draws in a plunger that connects the main battery to your starter motor. So let's take the three metric screws off on the end cap here and take a look at this plunger. This plunger here has a wonderful copper washer and as you can see it's pitted. And that happens from the connecting of the strong amperage over to the starter. And we'll look inside here. We have two connecting areas, one here and one over here. And over a period of time, these arc and they also wear down. And so this washer can't touch evenly across these two sections. Now what causes the pitting happens a lot of times when the battery gets weak. The pull-in windings can't pull this in magnetically down into it, and so it kind of bounces on the two ends and starts actually mini welding, mini arcing on both sides. This unit and those two connectors can be replaced. The average cost for a Sportster is about $60 and for Big Twins about $160. It's a lot less than $400. Now the next area that can wear out is in the starter motor itself. You have the armature, but most of all, inside here on the end cap are four brushes that work with the armature in the starter motor. These brushes can wear down. When they start wearing down, then there's not a good enough connection between this and the armature. These can be replaced. The whole plate and the four brushes average about $85, and that can give more new life to the armature and the starter motor. Now, the last item I want to address is inside here. It's the starter clutch. One of the most things that we seem to be replacing on older motorcycles, especially the older motorcycles that have kickback, you know that time when you're hitting the starter and all of a sudden back, it hits back. That kickback really works against the starter clutch because the starter clutch works this way. When the solenoid is pushed and pushes the pinion gear out from the starter onto the clutch gear, that rotates your clutch, which rotates the motor and start. Once the motor starts, well, this pinion needs to fly on its own and not be caught up in the gear of the clutch in turning. So that's what the starter clutch does. The starter clutch lets it free roll until the solenoid pulls it back in. Now when you have kickback, it's actually fighting against the starter clutch and tearing it apart. So one of the things you can hear when the starter clutch is going bad is when you hit the starter button and you hear a motor turning, but your engine is not turning. Then that has to do with the starter clutch. These are three items that possibly can go wrong with your starter that you can individually replace. The starter clutch averages about $125 for the part itself, and then, of course, you have to pay for the installation. The starter is a hardworking machine that takes the full cranking amperage to turn your engine over and over again through its lifetime. Now, if your motorcycle is 20 to 30 years or more old, it's very possible the whole starter has worn out. And let me give you a small tech tip. If you are considering buying an aftermarket starter that says it is stronger, more powerful, know this. If you put the more heavy-duty starter in your motorcycle, you're going to have to use brand new cables, ground and positive, because you need the full amperage of a brand new battery. That's the other thing that you'll need to replace. Because a more powerful starter needs a more powerful battery and cables that can transfer that power to the starter to work for you. Personally, I just put a brand new Harley-Davidson starter in that was made for my motorcycle so everything else works. 
I hope these tech tips today help you know a little bit more about your starter and help you get a few more miles out of your starter before full and replacement. I'm Doc Harley. We'll see you next week.